Good morning. We had our chicken sale Friday. I see most of you made it back, so apparently we didn't abuse you enough. We have to work on that next time, preacher. All right, I'm glad you all made it back. Thank you for your help with the chicken sale. It was definitely much appreciative, and we would not have been able to do it without any of you. So thank you all for your help and for your support. Uh, we do have a few hats left, so you can see Pastor and I uh, after service if you would uh, like to have a few more. They'll be even at a, uh, a lesser uh, discounted rate, so just come by and see us and we'll uh, get you hooked up. Thank you. So please stand and we'll do the chorus of our month, 704, one we're very, very familiar with. So Brother George is not here, so you get to hear my golden lungs today, or golden voice or whatever we call it. Whatever you call it is anything but golden. Seven zero four. Then, uh, what a mighty God we serve! What a mighty God we serve! Angels bow before Him, heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve! One more time through. What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. We got one more here. Um, I did not, what did I do with it? What is it? 541. Got too many notes in my flyleaf. Five, four, one. And after this, preacher will come and open the service up with prayer. Five, four, one. There's within my heart a sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace, be still. In all life's the ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. The Lord filled my heart with pain. Jesus wept across the broken streams. Stir the slumbering lords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Resting neath a sheltering wing, always looking on his smiling face. That is why I shout and sing. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, try to fall and cross the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall
sounded beautiful. Let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity as we gather together in your house. We're so, our hearts are happy this morning, filled with joy because of who you are. And you brought us here to this place. I ask your blessing upon this service together. Each one who's gathered here, may you just encourage them uh, today in your word and in the fellowship of one another. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you're seated, turn and shake hands with somebody close by you. Smile nicely and welcome them this morning in the name of the Lord. All right, thank you. You may be seated. And good to see you this morning. Welcome our, our guests and our returning guests. We've got some here this morning. We appreciate you being here and coming back, as well as our regulars, all right? As far as announcements are concerned, just read your bulletin. I don't want to have to read all of those. That's why we print them out for you. But uh, just a reminder, next Sunday is Miller's Assisted Living, so you can make preparation for that. And there's other things coming up. Our classes for our Faith Bible Institute begin on the 22nd. Uh, Sunday School Promotion Sunday. There's some upcoming events in September. Friend Day is coming up, our annual Friend Day, and so you'll be hearing more about that as time draws closer. So uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, any of those upcoming events, you can see myself uh, or the Rich, Pastor Rich, we can... Uh, Hopefully, if not answer the questions, point you to the person that can, all right? Um, we did uh, make it through Pearson days, uh, a lot of running. We were unable to do some of the things we wanted to do, but, but uh, the things that we did, were able to participate in, uh, we uh, had some good results from. So uh, we appreciate your prayers and those that helped uh, for all of that. Um, also, want to I should mention, we would mentioned this coming up, but we have some new neighbors now in our, the missionary house next door. Uh, the Hostetler family uh, arrived Friday, uh, missionaries from Madagascar, and they will be there for 15 months while they're home on furlough in the States. And uh, so I don't know uh, when we might be able to see them here. I've met them, obviously. We've got them scheduled to come in October, at least, so we know who they are and what they're doing. But, but uh, so if you see activity over there, you know why, all right? All right, as far as prayer requests, are any announcements that I...
Thank you. Before our final song, we have a piano special by Zeke Ryle. Ode to Joy Moxby. Good job, buddy. All right, before we sing our last song, we get a couple embarrassments going on. Vaughn, who wanted to announce his birthday in four days. Stand up, come on. And then, of course, my beautiful wife, 11 months younger than me. You can stay seated. But Johnny, on the other hand, we can get him on up there. Yeah, there you go. You can even sit up on Dad's shoulders. It's your birthday. Enjoy it. You can cry if you want to. All right, so we'll sing them happy birthday. But first, I'd also mention um, Brother Urban, Miss Becky's uh, anniversary comes up on the 7th as well. How many years is that? 46. That is amazing. Is he correct? I think. That's awesome. Hey, you can never, hey, you can never fail. Eh, I think my anniversary today. Here you go, honey. She won't remember anyway. That's awesome. Forty-six years. That's amazing. That is awesome. Thank you for your, uh, definitely your example. That's amazing. All right. So happy birthday. And then you, can you play it or no? Yeah. Okay. Great. Hey. All right. 
Happy birthday to all three of you. Happy birthday to all three of you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Would you say all three of you or both of you? Both of you. All of you? All right. Okay, so, all right, enough fun, enough fun. Let's calm down here. Last, so let's stand real quick. Um, Pastor has a special that he's going to do, and after this special, uh, the junior church will be dismissed, and I will go into junior church. I will do junior church after preacher um, does his special. So after that's done, he will follow me, which is now, right? Or do you want to sing first? Sing last song. Sing last song, then the special. I thought it was the other way around. Okay, so please stand and turn your hymnals to 391. 391, we have an anchor. Yes, we do. seated and then following pastor special we will have junior church Jesus, why me? 
can have uh, sixth and below. Go ahead and line up at the door. I'll meet you down there. We'll get on down for junior church. Fourth and below, I think. Fourth and below. Oh, fourth and below. <laughs> All right. The rest of you, open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews this morning. Hebrews chapter 6. The point of that song is that God understands our every need, doesn't he? And uh, Jesus Christ is there not only to understand our need, uh, but to meet our needs uh, in every way, in every situation. And that's kind of where I want to head this morning. I've taken a break from uh, our series that we've been doing uh, on uh, biblical distinctives. Uh, and I just had this laid up on my heart this week, and, and uh, I began to prepare this. And I thought, no, I need to go to the series. And but the Lord wouldn't let me do that. So, uh, so we switch gears just a little bit for this morning. Hebrews chapter 6, and I want to begin reading the verse number 13. You can follow along as I read. We'll read down through verse 20, and then we'll open our time in the Word in prayer. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13. It says, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, he swore by himself saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made a high priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Let's open in prayer. Father, I just ask you would bless this time in your word. Use it to encourage our hearts to help us today. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One foggy night, a ship at sea, the captain, he saw a light afar off of another ship, and he got on the radio. He said, change your course 20 degrees south to avoid collision. Well, the reply came back and said, no. You change your course 20, 20 degrees north to avoid collision. Well, the captain angrily radioed back. He said, this is Captain Jacob Newsom, and I demand that you change your course immediately. The message came back. This is Seaman, first class, William Jones, and I demand that you change your course immediately. Well, the infuriated ship's captain, one more time, final time, he got on the radio, he said, this is your last warning to change your course and avoid a collision. I am a battleship. At which the, voice, the other voice immediately re 
signaled back and said, this is your last warning to change course and avoid a collision. I am a lighthouse. <laughs> my, my question for you this morning is, which would you rather be? Battleships are great. <laughs> would, you, would you rather be a battleship or would you ra rather be a lighthouse? <laughs> All right. All right. Don't give away my message, uh, young people. But no, let's, let's listen up. In the challenges and uncertainties of life, we need something that doesn't move, right? We need something that cannot be moved by wind or wave or by anything else. Something we can truly rely on to give us direction and, and to give us a solid foundation. Something that doesn't change in the midst of stormy weather. And I have news for you this morning. There is such a foundation. There is such an anchor. We need an anchor for which we can fasten our lives, an anchor to keep us from being blown off course. And, and uh, you know as well as I do that winds are everywhere, right? Uh, and it's hard to sometimes to stay on course. But look what he says again in verse 18 here of chapter 6 when he says, uh, the last part of that verse, he says, we have, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as what? An anchor of the soul. An anchor of the soul. But there's a word here, we read through it, but a word that is vital to our faith that I want us to see. In verse number 17, first of all, it says, the heirs have promised the immutability of his counsel. Verse 18, by two immutable things. I want to talk about that word just for a moment. Immutable, that's the basis of our message this morning. That word immutable means it does not change. Okay? It does not change. Change. In James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, With God there is no variableness, there is no shadow of turning. There's not even a hint, a possibility of God changing who He is or changing uh, his, uh, his eternal purposes. And so this morning, I want to look at three things quickly. We do have a, a communion here in, in a little bit, so we'll be brief. But three things I want us to notice uh, that is unchanging about God. And by the way, that word, uh, it seems like a big word, but that word, that unchanging, that is the, the basis of our hope, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's the basis. Of, it's vital to our faith because if, if that were not the case, none of us would have any assuredness of heaven or of any hope. If God could, at a whim, all of a sudden say, well, I've changed my mind, <laughs> right? We'd have no hope. There, there, there would be no strong foundation, no anchor to, to hang ourselves uh, on. And so first of all, this morning, I want us to notice here in verse number 17, God's unchanging purpose. God's unchanging purpose. Verse 17, he says, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. But that word counsel there means his will or his purpose. You see, what God declares and what he sets out to do, he does without fail. Every single day time. No one, nothing can thwart the plan and the purposes of God. No one can keep him doing from what he wants to do. And again, it says there, it is unchangeable. And the context here, we read a little bit of the previous verses, the context is uh, God's promises to Abraham. What did he promise Abraham? He promised him a land, he promised him a people, in fact, a seed that it says was, uh, would be uh, as the stars of heaven, as the sand of the sea, right? He promised him an inheritance uh, in that way, a heritage, if you will. Uh, he promised him a son, didn't he? A special son, the promised son, Isaac. But understand, God's promise to Abraham was much bigger than Abraham. It wasn't just about making Abraham happy in his old age, okay? It went far deeper than that, and it's important we understand that. It was about providing redemption and salvation to a lost and dying world. He said, Abraham, through your seed, he said, through your seed, all the nations of the world would be blessed. He was speaking of the promised seed, that is, of the coming Messiah that would come uh, from his lineage, and so his promise to Abraham was more than about Abraham. God's plan of redemption started long before Isaac was born. In fact, we read in the Garden of Eden, uh, we, we read of the first sacrifice, don't we? 
God's plan of redemption effectively uh, began there in the Garden of Eden with the first sacrifice. Uh, And also in the Garden, there was a glimpse of the final sacrifice when he told the serpent, he said, uh, the the seed of the woman, speaking again of of the coming one, of the coming Messiah of Jesus Christ, but he said, he will, you'll bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. And so we see there a glimpse of the coming uh, Savior as well. But we know even before that, even before that, God's plan of redemption was set into motion, right? The Bible says from the foundation, before the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain. And so God's purposes and God's plan were about more than Abraham, and I've got news for you, God's purpose and plan is more than about just us. (laughs) It's more than about uh, just making us happy or giving us the desires of our heart. Now, God wants to do that, but it's bigger than that. It's more than that. His purpose is about showing himself as God in your life and my life. His purpose, it's an eternal purpose. And so first of all, we know here, we see that God has an unchanging purpose. Secondly, this morning, look in verse number 18. Not only do I notice God's unchanging purpose, but I see God's unchanging promise. His unchanging promise. Verse 18, that by two immutable, unchangeable things... But look what it says, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. You know, as well as I do, that a promise is only as good as the one making the promise, right? Uh, And I won't get into the political world this morning, all right? But we know that a promise is only as good as the one who makes the promise. Uh, I remember uh, one time... uh, my wife tells a story. This is when shortly after we were married. I was still in college. She was already out. She was smarter than I was. She finished before I did. But anyway, uh, and, and so she, uh, I worked uh, a part-time job. She worked two or three part-time jobs to help get me through uh, college. But uh, for a while, she was working at a, a daycare center. And this little boy, he was, what, four years old probably, something like that. And uh, he had started a, a, a problem. He had taken another kid's toy and, and uh was very nasty, you know, and so Laura called him over uh, and, and said, that's, you know, you don't do that and so forth, and, and uh, now promise me you won't do that again, and you'll play nice, and you'll share. He's, I promise. So he goes over, and she says, less than a minute later, same thing happens. <laughs> he repeats the problem, and so she called him over again, and she said, I thought you promised me you wouldn't do that again, and she said, he looked, I, uh, it looked her in the eye, serious could be, and said, so? I lied. Well, it might be a little humorous thinking about children, but, but the point is, what good is a promise if the person making the promise can't keep it or is unwilling to keep it or doesn't keep it? Notice what it says here. It doesn't say in verse 18 uh, that God does not lie. What's it say? God cannot lie, right? It is impossible for God to to lie. In other words, God has never made a promise that he cannot or will not keep. Okay? Remember that. He's never made a promise that he cannot or will not keep. He'll keep every single one of the 10,000 or so promises that he has made in his word. He has a promise for you when you're sick. He has a promise for you when you're afraid. He has a promise for you when you're discouraged or when you're weak or when you're ready to quit, when you're searching for peace and comfort. He's got a promise for you, and he will fulfill that promise. That's why the end of verse 18, he says, he talks about uh, impossible for God to lie, that uh, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. He is the immovable anchor, the immovable lighthouse, the immovable refuge that we can run to and we can cling to in times of desperation, in, in times when things are not going the way we want them to go. I don't know about any of you, but you've, uh, there's the, sometimes there's frustrating days. There's difficult days. Uh, there's days that you want to just throw up your hands and say, that's it, I've had enough, right? But he is the one we can run to, and he will help us. Uh, he will strengthen us and, and get us through, give us the grace and strength to carry on. So I don't know what you might be facing in your life today, but God is ready, he's willing to help you through whatever that situation might be. You know, God has never given up on us. How in the world could we even think about giving up on God? Yet how many Christians have done just that? They're out of church, 
They quit serving God all because maybe it was a bad experience. Maybe it's because of what somebody said or did. Uh, maybe they just got discouraged and quit. But listen, God didn't quit on you. God didn't quit on us. So don't we dare quit on God. We see God's unchanging purpose. We see his unchanging promise. There's a third thing, a final thing I notice here. Verse number 19 and 20. God's unchanging provision. God's unchanging provision. Look at verse 19. He says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. And then look what he says, and which entereth into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Our anchor, our anchor is the one which enters the veil. Now, what's, what's he talking about there? We talked about this when we, in our series on the priest of the believer, but the, the picture is the temple, uh, and, or the, even the tabernacle before that, but that, that veil that was in the inner tabernacle, uh, behind which laid the, the, the ark of God, the ark of the covenant, and behind which veil no man could go, not even the priest could go behind that veil, except the high priest once a year could enter behind that veil and, and offer an atonement for the sins of the nation. On the, on the Day of Atonement. That's the picture we have. That veil, uh, that, that most holy place behind that veil where God dwelt. And it says here in verse 19 that we have one who was able to enter the veil and became forever our high priest, our mediator. And that is who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ became the sacrifice for our sin. The only sacrifice that could wash away sin and grant forgiveness and eternal life. And so, this morning, his offer of salvation has not changed. He will forgive all who come to him, all who turn to him, believing that he died on the cross, and calling upon him for forgiveness and salvation. In John chapter 6, familiar verse, Jesus said, He that comes to me, he, I will in no wise, under no circumstances, will I ever cast out. John 10, 28, Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And so this morning, we are saved by the power of God, and we are kept the very same way. It's not by our good looks, thankfully, because some of us would be out of luck, all right? It's not by our, our good works. It's not by anything that we could deserve to be saved or to stay saved, but it's by the unchanging promise and the unchanging purpose and the unchanging provision of God. I want to read something as I close this morning. And uh, I didn't get permission, but I hope it's okay to read that other uh, article that you sent me uh, from Judy's niece, Connie. And let me just read this and then we'll make a couple comments and close. Uh, this is a, a, evidently a daily post, day 126 it says, so through their journeys of, of, of sickness and, and cancer and so forth, she's been keeping a journal, but it says this, honestly, these past 24 hours have been so very tough for me, I'm exhausted and physically still in pain. I started back at work the same day Nicholas started school this week and now have Leo back in the hospital. I wondered after four plus months how much deeper can I dig down. As I was paying the parking attendant this morning at Piedmont, there at the hospital, so she took one look at me and asked, Dear, is everything okay? Normally, I just automatically reply, It's great. But this morning, for whatever reason, I answered, No, ma'am, it's not. I'll never forget the next word she said to me. She said, You'll be all right. God got you. <laughs> Those seven words brought instant tears and just was just the reminder that I needed today, tomorrow, and moving forward. The reminder was perfectly timed and delivered when I was just when I was questioning. After all we've been through, how do I move forward from this, God? Thank you, dear parking attendant. I couldn't read her name tag through my tears for this reminder this morning. May we all remember God got you. I think a couple things there. Number one, it reminds us of the importance of our words that can help people through these things, but secondarily, uh, and even more so, it reminds us that God has us, <laughs> that we belong to, if you're here this morning, you know Christ is your Savior, you're in His hands. 
Uh, and he's not going to change his mind and say, sorry, you're out of luck. Uh, I decided to do things differently. His purpose, his promise, his provision is unchanging. And so whatever you might be facing this morning, understand God has you. Uh, and he will keep you and give you the strength you need to see you through each and every day. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. <clears throat> Every head bowed, every eye closed, just as we reflect for a few moments. And we're not going to belabor this morning, but just for a few moments. I don't know why uh, God may have laid this message on my heart, other than I, I guess I would be honest and say uh, I needed it this morning. But maybe you're going through something, and you've been through things, and maybe the waves have been beating against your ship, uh, and, and the wind has been throwing you off course. And... Uh, there's uncertainties and things that you're dealing with in your own life this morning. I don't need to know what those are. God does, and the Holy Spirit can, can uh, work in your heart this morning. But uh, this morning, would you just give it over to God? He understands what you're going through, and He is there for you to cling to. He is the, the rock of our salvation. He is the anchor, as we learned this morning, of our soul. And He can keep us from from drifting off course uh, or from uh, the, the ship sinking and, uh, and, and treading water. And so again, I don't know what it might be this morning, but I would, at least as we close, I'd like to pray for you this morning if I can. Maybe there's some here this morning, again, I don't need to know what it is, but I would like to pray for you as we close. If there's something that God has spoken in your heart about or something, a need in your life that, that uh, you need His guidance and help with, would you just raise your hand? I'll say thank you. Put it right back down. I'll close in prayer and remember in prayer. Not by name, not in any such way, but I'll just pray for you. Anyone very quickly? Please pray for me. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, there's more. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, thank you. Let's pray. Father, as we close our service this morning, we prepare for, for a communion, that precious reminder of what you did for us on the cross. But this morning, Father, I pray that your word would take root in our heart. And, uh, Father, that we would understand uh, the God that you are, uh, that there is no shadow of turning, that, that uh, every promise you've made you're going to keep. And may we just rest in you this morning. And uh, maybe it's not something now, but maybe t there might be something tomorrow we face, and uh, we know we don't know what, holds, uh, what tomorrow holds, uh, but we know that you hold tomorrow. And so I pray that you might give us the strength and all that we need to see us through uh, whatever comes. Help us, to, again, to keep our eyes uh, focused on you uh, and, and what you desire uh, for our lives. And for these that raise their hand, Father, I don't know what you might be speaking their heart about, but I pray again for your wisdom, for your guidance, for your strength. Uh, Father, may you just refresh them spiritually, emotionally, physically. Uh, Father, just grant uh, the needs that they have acknowledged to you this morning. And I bless as we close this uh, time of our service together uh, and as we, uh, again, remember that precious sacrifice uh, accomplished for us on the cross of Calvary. Bless these moments, we pray, and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your hymnals, if you would. Turn to hymn number 476. 476. We'll just sing a couple of verses as we prepare for communion. And uh, if I could have, uh, Josh, you want to go down and get, uh, tell your dad that we're, okay, all right, very good. Let's stand together, sing 476. <clears throat> I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. last verse. All to Jesus I surrender. Lord, 
I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All right, you may be seated. Thank you. Uh, if I can help you in any way, pray with you, or, or be an encouragement in whatever way to you, I'll be at the back at the close of service. We'd certainly love to do that. Well, uh, it's uh, here at First Baptist Church once a month. We uh, have communion together as a reminder of what, and in obedience to Scripture, uh, as a reminder of what uh, Christ has done for us. And uh, so this morning we will do that. If you're here this morning and you are not a, a member of the church, uh, all that we ask uh, to participate this morning is, number one, you know Christ is your Savior. Uh, and uh, to the best of your ability, you're walking in obedience to Him. Okay, that's between you and, and God. Uh, there's certainly uh, a lot there. But uh, you don't have to be a member of our church is the point to partake this morning, okay? If you're part of the family of God, uh, and uh, uh, in accordance to Scripture, that is, again, he warns us or he tells us that we need to make sure we partake worthily. So that's just uh, my obligation to, to let you know that examine your heart as these elements are passed uh, as we partake of these things. So, so as we uh, partake of communion, if we can have, uh, George is not here, so we'll have to get uh, a fill-in as well. Brother Ed, are you able to help this morning? And Brother Rich? Uh, Brother Rex, uh, please. And um, Brother Herb, would you mind helping out this morning just to fill in for us? Thank you. <coughs> All right. Well, as Jesus was there in the upper room with his disciples, uh, he gave them a, uh, what I call a precious gift. Uh, they didn't understand all what that was about at that moment in time, but he gave them something to remember. What, what, was about, he, what he was about to do on their behalf. And then it was given to us as the church. And Paul writes about it in Corinthians and explains a little bit about uh, the body and, the, and the, the bread and the blood and the cup. And so these elements that we have, this is not the body and blood of Christ. Please understand that these are just representations. They're reminders to us uh, of what he's done for us on the cross. And so the Bible says uh, that we're to do these things until he comes as a reminder uh, for us as his people. And so first of all is the, cu uh, the bread, uh, representing his body that was broken for us. And I'm going to ask Brother Rex if you'll ask the blessing on that element, please.
took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it. He said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. Brother Rich, would you ask a blessing on that element, please? took the cup, and he up saying, this cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. This do is offered to drink it in remembrance of me. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand together. We're going to sing a chorus before we dismiss this morning. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Before we sing, Service tonight, 6 o'clock. We're going to continue our uh, walk through uh, with Joshua. Uh, and so I invite you to come back tonight. And uh, I told you last Sunday, thank you for the party last Sunday, by the way, the surprise uh, party for you during the, for me during the evening, for us. But tonight we're getting back into our study, and uh, we're going to talk about daylight savings time tonight. All right? So <laughs> the day the sun stood still. We'll be here tonight uh, for that, 6 o'clock. Um, other than that, uh, I don't know about you, but... Uh, it's been a busy summer, but a fruitful summer. Uh, we finished Bible school a couple weeks ago and, and uh, had a record attendance and, and then getting the house ready and then Pearson days, and so I'm ready for a vacation. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're going to hang in a couple more weeks. We, my wife and I are going away after our, after our renewal of vows for, for about a week, so, so we'll get a vacation here in a little bit. But, but then we've got to gear up for what? Kids club and... Uh, 
teen life, all sorts of things coming up. So, so take a breath, but not very long. All right. Let's close. Glad you're here. Please come back. We'd love to see you again here at First Baptist Church. Let's sing that chorus together, and we'll dismiss. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Amen. All right, you're dismissed. On the way out, we do have our, our benevolence fund, our deacon fund offering. That's to help those in need in our church and without. If you'd care to, no obligation, but if you care to give that, there'll be a basket at the back on your way out. Thank you for coming. Have a good day. Lord willing, see you tonight.